hello viewers welcome to the video lecture series on data communication it is the first lecture of the 40 lecture series and in this lecture i shall give an introduction and course outline first let me introduce myself my name is ajit pal i joined iit kharagpur in 1982, the day Asia started in Delhi and I am currently professor in the computer science and engineering department of IIT Kharagpur. I received M Tech and PhD degrees from the Institute of Radio Physics and Electronics, Calcutta University in the year 1971 and 1976 respectively. My research interests include embedded systems, low power VLSI circuits and computer networks. I am fellow of the IIT India and senior member of the IEEE USA. If you want to send email address to me, here is the email address apal at the rate of cac.iitkgp.ernet.in. So, you can send email to me on this. Before I discuss about the various topics that will be covered in this lecture. First, I shall give a very oversimplified model of data communication system and that will put you in proper perspective. So, here is the oversimplified model of data communication system. You have got a source. Source is essentially where the data is originated. Source can be a computer, peripheral, it can be some uh, communication equipment like cell phones, PDAs and so on. So, any system which can send data, which can process data and which can receive data can be source. Then you will require a transmitter then you will require a transmitter and transmitter is is the device which converts the data sent by the source into a suitable form for transmission through the medium. As we shall see the source generates data and transmitter will convert it into a suitable form which can be sent through the communication system. So, the third component is the communication system the medium through which signal is sent. Now, the medium can be very simple a, a piece of wire or a pair of wire like coaxial cable, twisted pair of wire or it can be optical fiber or it can be local area network, it can be wide area network. So, by communication system we mean that it can be a very simple system like a, a pair of wire or it can be very complex system like LAN, WAN or internet. So, we shall consider different types of communication systems. Then comes the receiver which receives the signal and converts it into data or message. So, here again you see you require a receiver which will receive the signal coming through the communication system and then it will do some processing and then it will send convert after converting the signal into data it will send to the destination. Destination again can be a computer, can be uh, peripherals, can, can be communication equipments whatever I mean source and uh, destination equipments can be of same type. Now, let us consider what do we mean by data. The source is generating some data or message is the information to be communicated. What do you mean by data? Data is something which conveys some meaning to the receiver that is what we call data and data can be analog in nature, can be digital in nature or and so here by DT we means the data it can be analog, it can be digital which is sent from the source to the transmitter. Now, the transmitter as I said 
will convert it into a signal. So, data is transformed into signal. As such, the data cannot be sent through the communication system. Data has to be converted into some electromagnetic signal, which can be transmitted through a medium. The signal can be uh, elect electrical in nature, electronic in nature or optical in nature, which can be sent through the communication system. And then the let us see, uh, first before I discuss anything else about the communication system and other thing, let us first consider uh, what, what do we mean by data and signal. First of all, we shall discuss about what do we mean by data, analog and digital data types, analog and digital data. Then as I mentioned, the data has to be converted into signal. Again, the signal can be analog or digital in nature or digital. It can be either of the two types. So, we shall discuss about uh, two different types of uh, signals, analog and digital. Both types will be considered and as we shall see, the signal can be periodic in nature, can be aperiodic in nature and in fact, a signal which is not periodic in nature can be considered as a combination of some periodic signals. So, we have to, we shall first discuss the periodic signal characteristics uh, and then we shall see how periodic signals can be used uh, to form non-periodic signals. And as we shall see, the signal can have two different types of representation. One is time domain representation, another is frequency domain representation. We shall, we shall, we shall discuss about the time domain and frequency domain representations. And in this context, we have to discuss the spectrum of the signal and bandwidth of the signal. We shall discuss about both of them and we'll see, and also see the relationship between the two. And obviously, when a signal is generated, it has to be propagated uh, and obviously, for going to uh, whenever it goes from say transmitter to the receiver, the signal has to go through the communication system and depending on the uh, distance and medium used, there will be some propagation time and obviously, the wavelength of the signals uh, that can be sent will depend on the medium that is that is being sent. So, we shall discuss in details the data and signal. Then comes the uh, impairments that take place as the signal goes to the through the signal. As the signal passes through the transmission media, it, it suffer some impairment. That impairment can be in the form of attenuation. We shall see uh, the uh, how attenuation occurs and also the unit of attenuation decibel or dB, which is universally used. We shall discuss about the attenuation of different types of media and the unit of attenuation. And also in this context, we shall con consider the bandwidth of a medium the signals which can be sent through the medium and for different types of mediums, the signal can be of different types. Then as I said, the impairments will take place and one reason is attenuation and second reason is distortion. The distortion will occur in two forms. These two forms are known as delay distortion and also the time distortion and obviously, these two distortions are to be taken care of at the receiving end and the rate at which the data can be sent will be dependent on the medium and as we shall see, there is some limit, data rate limit which can be sent through a medium and which is characterized by Nyquist bit rate. Depending on the bandwidth of the medium, the Nyquist bit rate uh, will be decided which we, we shall discuss in detail about this Nyquist bit rate which is, which is the highest data rate that can be transmitted through the medium. And another important concept is the baud rate. We shall see the as the sig data is sent, it is converted into signal and actually the rate at which data is sent and the rate at which the signal elements are sent through the medium is different and that leads to two different concepts like bit rate and baud rate. We shall discuss about both of them in details and the relationship between the two. And apart from attenuation, distortion, there is another source of noise 
the noise the another source of distortion is noise the not we shall discuss about various noise sources and see how they affect both the analog and digital type of signal as we say as we as we know the signal can be analog in nature or it can be digital in nature so how these two different types of signals are affected as uh, because of noise and whenever in presence of noise how the bandwidth of the signal or the rate uh, channel capacity changes that is decided by the shannon capacity in a noisy channel we shall discuss about this in detail uh, in subsequent lectures then uh, as i said the signal has to be sent through some transmission media we shall discuss about two different types of transmission media in fact the all transmission uh, the transmission media can be broadly divided into two types one is guided another is unguided in case of guided uh, transmission media there are three popular types twisted pair coaxial cable and fiber optic cable we shall discuss about the characteristics of these three types of uh, guided transmission media and also we shall discuss about the transmission of uh, signal uh, through unguided media or through air in that case of course as we shall see there are three mechanisms of sending uh, transmission in the wireless form one is radio wave another is microwave another is infrared so there are three different forms in which the wireless transmission uh, occurs and the example is the broadcast radio that am fm radio that we hear then the terrestrial microwave satellite microwave and infrared communication so these are the four different types of transmission media in the context of wireless communication and we shall discuss about all of them in details then as i said the signal has to be data has to be converted into signal for transmission through the uh, media transmission media and depending on the data and the signal as you can see various approaches that can be used first of all if the data is digital in nature here the data is digital in nature signal can be also of digital in digital in nature and in that context we call it encoding whenever we transform digital data to digital signal the approach that we that is the, uh, that is followed is known as encoding and as we shall see there are various enco encoding techniques then if the data is analog in nature such as voice video and convert into digital form uh, then also we have to do encoding so in general whenever the signal is digital in nature or when we do digital transmission the conversion process is known as encoding on the other hand whenever the signal is analog in nature whether it is an, an analog data or digital data uh, the we call it modulation that means the technique is known as modulation and obviously uh, we, we in the what type of signal should we use will be dependent on the situation and bandwidth and obviously of the transmission media that we are using let us look at the conversion techniques coding techniques first here uh, we have discussed we have mentioned uh, the uh, mentioned about the various techniques for digital to digital conversion that means here we are doing encoding the encoding can be divided into three types the, this is known as line coding so unipolar polar and bipolar unipolar is not that popular so it is not uh, popular because of its various limitations and we shall discuss about the limitations of unipolar transmission and the polar where the signal has two different levels has got a number of varieties such as non return to zero zero nrz return to zero rz manchester encoding differential differential manchester encoding so these are the four popular polar techniques for line coding and we shall discuss about each of them their advantages disadvantages bandwidth required in details in the subsequent lectures so far as the bipolar techniques are concerned uh, which are which have some advantages are ami 
amplitude mark inversion, then B A J S and H D B 3. So, these are the three popular bipolar encoding techniques and we shall discuss about these three techniques in details. Coming to analog data to digital signals, where the, and it's the data is say analog in nature such as voice, video. In such a case, you have to convert the analog data into digital form and there are two basic approaches known as one is known as pulse code modulation and second one is known as delta modulation. So, we shall discuss about these two techniques and obviously, we shall consider the limitations of both PCM and delta modulation technique and compare, uh, compare these two approaches in details in subsequent lectures. Coming to the modulation techniques where we are generating analog signal and if the data is analog in nature, we have three different modulation techniques which can be broadly divided into two types amplitude modulation and angle modulation. And again angle modulation has got two different components frequency modulation and phase modulation. Actually when we shall discuss the data and signal, we shall see that the a, an analog signal has got three important parameters amplitude, frequency and phase and any one of the three parameters can be modified or changed to send uh, to in, embed some signal and actually the, that has this, this has led to three different modulation techniques like amplitude modulation, frequency modulation and phase modulation and we shall discuss about these three modulation technique in details, their advantages, disadvantages, the bandwidth required for transmission through the media, the, uh, the immunity to noise and so on. We shall discuss about the three modulation techniques. Coming to digital to analog modulation where the data is digital in nature and uh, signal is again analog in form. So, in such a case again we have got three different techniques known as amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying and phase shift keying. And of course, uh, these two can be combined to form another modulation technique known as QAM quadrature amplitude modulation. So, we shall discuss about these four modulation technique which are used for converting digital data to analog signal and these, these, these are widely used particularly the QAM and PSK are used uh, in many applications, ASK is used in amplitude mod uh, in transmission of signal through optical fiber. So, all these modulation techniques we shall consider in details. Then uh, as we shall see whenever the bandwidth of the medium is very high, it is possible to send several signals simultaneously and the technique that can be used is known as multiplexing. And in this lecture we shall discuss about the basic concepts of multiplexing and there are two different forms like frequency division multiplexing and wavelength division multiplexing are the three different forms frequency division, wavelength division, these two are essentially same thing uh, represented in two different ways and then time division multiplexing. Again time division multiplexing has got two different forms synchronous TDM and asynchronous TDM. We shall discuss about both of them and compare their advantages and limitations and as we shall see uh, nowadays another technique that is being used is known as inverse TDM. So, when we shall discuss multiplexing techniques, we shall discuss all these topics in details. Of course, the multiplexing has got very uh, wide applications and in this lecture series, we shall f discuss about four important applications and four important applications are telephone system which is used uh, in use in our day, uh, day to day life. Uh, which has go and how we shall discuss how using multiplexing technique two different types of services known as analog services and digital services are provided. And nowadays it is possible to have a broadband service using the telephone system known as DSL technology. So, digital subscri subscriber uh, line technology 
and it has got three different types of three different variations like ADSL, SDSL and HDSL, the other four different types ADSL, SDSL, HDSL and VDSL and we shall discuss about all the four one after the other when we shall discuss the multiplexing application. Then we shall discuss about cable modem where the standard uh, cable TV network can be used for transmission of data and that, has, that is possible by using a technique known as hybrid fiber coaxial network or HFC network and we shall see how multiplexing technique is used not only to send the TV signals, but also to send data rather that which can be used for internet access. Then so far as the optical network is concerned, we shall consider another important application of multiplexing known as SONET synchronous optical network and synchronous optical network provides you very high bandwidth and we shall see how that bandwidth can be used and particularly the telephone system and SONET system can be integrated that also we shall discuss in detail. So, these are the four important applications of multiplexing we shall discuss in details in subsequent lectures. Now, uh, we have discussed various techniques that is being used for sending signal through the communication system, the encoding techniques, modulation techniques and multiplexing techniques. And as the signal passes through the medium because of the various impairments, the signal that is being sent that is ST is not same uh, as it is received by the receiver. So, signal received through the medium is different from what has been sent, but what the receiver wants is the same thing. Now, so we have to identify find out what kind of problem or what is the difference between the original signal and the received signal. So, uh, particularly in this context, uh, we shall discuss first about how the interfacing to the medium can be done and for that part for that purpose the various modes of communication we shall discuss like parallel and serial, simplex, full duplex and half duplex techniques. There are two approaches of serial communication and also parallel communication asynchronous and synchronous we shall discuss about that. Then DC, DT interface that is being used for interfacing between the source and the transmitter and also for the destination at the interface. So, this interface is known as this source and destination are known as the DTE and data terminal equipment and transmitter and receiver are known as DCE. So, this interface will be discussed in detail which is uh, known as RS230C and in this context there will be a concept known as null modem that we shall discuss in details. The next dot 25 and various types of modems or DCEs that is being used will be discussed so that you can interface to the communication system. So, then we have got another important uh, concept you see as we receive the signal we shall see the data that is being sent by the source is different from the data that is being received. So, they are not same. So, in this context uh, there is some problem and that problem is known as error. So, because of various types of impairments like attenuation, distortion and noise there will be error. Error will be introduced in the signal. If it is a digital signal a 0 will become 1, a 1 will become 0 and obviously, first we have we shall discuss about different techniques for detection of error and the uh, various types of error that can occur. First of all, uh, we shall discuss about single bit error, then burst error and single bit error only one bit gets changed from 1 to 0 or from 0 to 1. On the other hand, in case of burst error, a sequence of bits say 1100 0, 0, uh, gets changed to uh, 1011. Uh, 1, 1. So, this is this happens whenever a burst error occurs. So, we shall discuss about both of them and particularly various techniques that is being used for error detection such as parity check, two dimensional simple parity check where only one bit error detection is possible or odd number of error detection is possible. 
then two dimensional parity check, check sum and psychic redundancy techniques. So, these are the four different error detection techniques which are used for detecting both single bit error and burst error will be discussed in detail. And as we shall see, psychic psych redundancy check is the most popular which is known as CRC and possibly the most widely used technique. And apart from error detection techniques, we shall discuss about error correcting codes which can be used to correct the error from the received data and this is known as forward error correction. So, we shall discuss about that particularly by using Hamming code. Hamming code, how error correction can be done? We shall restrict our discussion to only single bit error correction. However, in practice something else is done uh, which is known as error control and where actually a backward error correction technique is used instead of forward error correction. In backward error correction what is being done? Uh, if the received signal is found to be corrupted, that means if there is error in it, then the, then the receiver sends a message to the transmitter to retransmit the, sig the uh, data or message once again. So, it is based on retransmission and, and this for that purpose there are several techniques and actually er, apart from error control, there is another technique which has to be used which is known as flow control flow control is necessary whenever the transmitter and receiver are not of the same capability. Suppose you have got a fast transmitter and a slow receiver, a server and a desktop system. In such a case, the transmitter can send at a very high speed, but the receiver is not capable of receiving at that speed. So, in such a case, uh, there will be overflow or the buffer of the receiver will become full. So, we have to overcome that problem and for that purpose flow control is technique is used. First technique that we shall discuss is, discuss is stop and wait flow control and also sliding, win sliding window fl flow control. So, both these techniques will be used and as we shall see uh, the performance of sliding window fl flow control is better that is why it is widely used and we shall see that these flow control approaches can be extended to perform error control or can be used for backward error correction. And for that purpose, uh, the technique is known as ARQ or automatic repeat request. And there are three different variations of error, uh, error control techniques. First one is known as stop and wait ARQ based on stop and wait flow control. So, we shall discuss about the stop and wait flow control in details. Then there is uh, another technique known as go back n ARQ, which is based on sliding window flow control approach. However, here error is also error and lost frame is also taken into consideration. So, we shall discuss about both stop and wait ARQ and go back n ARQ in details. Uh, however, go back n ARQ has some uh, extra overhead because of retransmission of some frames uh, which are not really necessary and that can be overcome by using selective repeat ARQ and we shall discuss about the selective repeat ARQ and particularly the buffer requirement in both cases, in all the three cases and also uh, the requirement of the number of bits that is required for numbering the frames. So, frame numbers are to be given so that this ARQ technique can work. So, number of bits required is again an overhead that we shall discuss uh, in the context of all these three techniques. Now, uh, whenever we are sending signal through a communication system, it is necessary to have synchronization at three different levels, at the bit level, word level and frame level. So, whenever the data link control is performed, essentially we are interested in frame synchronization a sequence of bits or sequence of characters are being sent and obviously, in this context you have to identify when the, a particular frame is starting and when it is ending. So, for that, so to do that you have to use some kind of framing or a stand a format has to be used, used such as it will have some flag at the beginning 
then you will have some addresses, then the data and the at the end also there will be some flag and also it may require some information for flow control, error control. The, the flow control and error control techniques that is that is being discussed, how that is being used in data link control will be discussed and also it will be necessary to perform link management to start a, to initiate a link, to, to, to continue the communication of messages and terminate the session. So, that will, that is known as link management and in this context there is a standard which is widely used known as, is known as high level data link control or HDLC. And HDLC is widely used, not only HDLC is widely used, some uh, limited versions of HDLC in other, in some other forms are also used and particularly we shall discuss HDLC in details, particularly uh, the, the following important parameters of HDLC such as types of stations, data transfer modes, frame formats, all these things we shall consider in detail. Uh, in the context of HDLC. So, <coughs> after considering data, communica uh, data communication with the help of uh, between two stations, for example, in the previous cases, in case of say HDLC, we are assuming that uh, there are two stations, here you have got one station and here you have got another station and there is a link between them, direct link between the tem them and they are communicating in with each other, that is the case of data link control. But there it may be necessary that a large number of stations or equipments wants to communicate with each other. In such a case, this kind of simplified direct link cannot be used and in such a case, we have to go for data communication through wide area network. And in that case, we have to use switching techniques. For example, uh, there are different types of switching techniques uh, and we shall discuss about uh, the, say, the te techniques like switching techniques like circuit switching and uh, in, a in one lecture we shall discuss about the uh, circuit switching techniques in details and after introducing the switch communication network and we shall see in a switch communication network you will have a number of intermediate nodes through which signals are sent. So, you will have some kind of stations and there is a, a number of nodes, intermediate nodes and these are essentially uh, equipments through which are used for communicating data to a number of stations and stations are connected to such nodes. and uh, that leads to a scenario known as wide area network, because these uh, stations may be uh, located far apart and they are connected with the help of nodes. And in that context, there are several switching techniques that is being used and the one of the most popular one is known as circuit switching technique and we shall discuss about the circuit switching fundamentals, its advantages and disadvantages and how the circuit switching is implemented. As we shall see, there are different concepts like space division switching using crossbar switches and time division switching uh, like say it uses TDM, time division multiplexing <coughs> and we shall discuss about how they are combined, space division and time division switching are combined to form a single switching technique. Then you have got we shall discuss about message switching and packet, packet switching. And in the context of uh, mes message switching, we shall see uh, how uh, a message can be sent through a switch communication network and what are, what are the limitations of a message switching technique. And particularly as we shall see, whenever a, a long message, say several gigabytes are sent through a network it monopolizes the network, it increases the probability of error. As we, as, as we shall see, whenever a la big message is sent, it gets, uh, there is a probability of corruption. I mean, probability of corruption increases. That is why message is usually sent in terms of a number of packets. That means, a single message 
is divided into a number of packets and each of them is sent separately and that is known as packet switching and we shall see in uh, that the packet switching is very efficient compared to message switching and we shall discuss about various packet switching techniques such as virtual circuit packet switching and datagram circuit packet switching and we shall compare the virtual circuit packet switching and datagram circuit packet switching in details and we shall see how they uh, compare with each other and what are their what are their disadvantages and disadvantages particularly as we shall see the circuit switching is essentially uh, more very similar to the telephone network where you have to establish a link then do the communication. On the other hand, packet switching is very similar to the postal system where we can send uh, a letter uh, and drop it in the letter box and then it can be sent to the next post office and so on. Essentially, it is based on store and forward, store and forward. So, we shall discuss about these uh, packet switching and uh, circuit switching technique is in details and particularly the application of circuit switching that is being done in in uh, say uh, public switch telephone network PSTN network wh where where the circuit switching has the biggest application. Then we shall discuss about some important applications of packet switching in different types of networks such as x.25 uh, frame relay and also in ATM. So, we shall discuss about these three different types of networks where these circuit switching and packet switching concepts are used and uh, we shall see how data communication can be done through these networks. <coughs> Then after discussing the various concepts of wide area network, of course, uh, there will be other techniques which I have not mentioned in the context of wide area network, uh, particularly, particularly uh, we shall be having, we shall be having a number of uh, techniques. Uh, as I mentioned frame relay x.25 ATM we shall consider and also we shall consider cellular, cellular telephone networks and satellite communication. We shall discuss about each of these networks in details and how the various techniques have been used and in the context of wide area networks we shall, we shall see that apart from switching techniques that I have discussed we have to use routing because the, the message or the packets have to be sent through a number of nodes. So, what will be the route and we shall discuss about the different types of routing techniques such as fixed routing, and then uh, dynamic routing, flooding and so on. So, various routing techniques we shall discuss in detail. and. In another important concept in this context that we shall have we have to discuss is known as congestion. The ne wide area network can be considered as a network of packets. Now, whenever a large number of packets are sent through the uh, network, uh, a, a, pro a problem known as congestion occurs. Just like uh, on the road, whenever a large number of com ro uh, cars come to the road. Uh, traffic congestion occurs similar to that uh, congestion occurs in wide area network whenever large number of nodes uh, are sending packets and uh, particularly as we shall see uh, whenever a large burst of packets are sent it leads to it may lead to congestion and we shall discuss about various uh, techniques by which we can first of all prevent congestion so, congestion control can be done in two ways. First, we shall consider how congestion can be prevented and second technique is whenever congestion occurs, how, how we can come out of it. So, we shall discuss about both the techniques like congestion uh, pre prevention and also congestion control 
when, uh, when which we have to apply whenever a congestion occurs and we have to come out of that congestion. Then we shall discuss about the various medium access control techniques. Medium access control techniques can be uh, uh, medium access control techniques can be of different types. For example, it can be uh, based on contention, contention based. That means you have got some kind of shared media, shared media, and a number of nodes are connected, and these nodes are having equal right to access the node. Then all these nodes are contending to get access to the uh, network. So, in such a case we have to use medium access control technique based on contention and this contention based medium access control techniques has a number of types. For example, it starts with ALOHA which is used in packet radio network. In packet radio network this is being used. So, we shall discuss about ALOHA. Then there will be other techniques which are based on con con uh, contention such as CSMA, carrier sense multiple access, which overcomes some of the limitations of ALOHA. Then we shall discuss CSMA CD, uh, carrier sense multiple access with collision detection, uh, particularly it improves the efficiency over CSMA. So, apart from these contention based schemes, we shall also discuss control based schemes such as uh, which are based on token ring, token bus and token, token bus and token ring which is based on sending tokens. That means, whenever a number of nodes are there, a station which is having the token will be able to send. This is how the contention is overcome. So, we shall discuss about this token passing techniques in the context of medium access control and this token passing control techniques are popular in many applications. Uh, for example, in, in FDDI an important uh, local area network technique token, the token passing technique is used for medium access control. So, apart from token, uh, token passing techniques, uh, the control access techniques there are other techniques which is based on reservation. There are many applications particularly which is used in satellite communication. You will see that neither the contention based schemes nor the token passing schemes can be used because of the long delay. So, in such a case we have to use a technique known as reservation scheme. So, we shall discuss about the reservation techniques which is used in satellite communication and reservation techniques are uh, important whenever the delay is very large and we shall discuss about the satellite communication and we shall see how reservation technique is used in satellite communication. On the other hand, the, con the contention based techniques are used in LAN and also it is e being used in uh, cellular telephone system. For example, uh, CDMA code division multi access or TDMA time division multiple access. These techniques are used in cellular telephone systems and we shall discuss how they are being used. So, we shall see in cellular telephone systems not only multiple uh, multiplexing, but also multiple access techniques are used and we shall see how they are combined to improve the efficiency of cellular telephone system. So, after discussing the WAN, we shall discuss about uh, the data communication through LAN, local area network. And local area network can be used whenever the geographical, geographic region is limited to few kilometers. And we shall discuss various issues involved in local area network. That means, who is sending, what it is sending and when it is sending. So, this will involve uh, I mean suppose you have got a shared media which is being accessed by a number of users. So, in that case the LAN technique has to decide who, who, which one, who will send, what will be sent that means what will be the size of the packet as we shall see there will be some minimum and maximum size and when it can send. 
obviously, there will be several techniques. We have to use several uh, techniques like medium access control as I mentioned, particularly in the context of LAN, both uh, contention based schemes and token passing schemes are used and we shall discuss how they are used in various local area networks. So, in the context of LAN, we have to use some kind of addressing, so that the sender and transmitter who is sending the uh, packet or frame uh, and where it is going, that means, the sender and receiver has to be identified. For that purpose, addressing has to be used. So, the address of the source, address of the destination are to be uh, sent, that is known as addressing. We have to use error detection in the whenever the data is so in a frame that is being sent, uh, we shall see uh, there will be some address information, source address, destination address, apart from data and also uh, there will be some CRC check for detecting errors. So, error detection that is being used in the context of local area networks. Apart from the conventional legacy lands like uh, Ethernet, uh, then your token ring or token bus. We shall discuss about high speed LANs and high speed LANs such as uh, five FDDI, fiber distributed digital interface, which is high speed LAN. And also, we shall discuss about uh, say first Ethernet and gigabit Ethernet. techniques that is being used in high speed LANs. So, FDDI, fast Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet and what are the advantages and disadvantages. And nowadays, the wireless local area network is becoming very, very popular. So, we shall discuss about the wireless uh, local area networks such as IEEE uh, 802.11 based techniques and also we shall discuss about uh, other uh, techniques like Bluetooth that is being used in wireless LAN. So, we shall discuss about the legacy LANs like Ethernet and also we shall discuss about the high speed LANs and wireless LAN in details. <coughs> then, uh, as we shall see, apart from local area networks and wide area networks, most of the people are communicating through internet, data communication is done through internet. So, we shall discuss about it the internet and as we shall see, internet comprises a local area network, wide area network and they are uh, bound together with the help of suitable software and hardware. So, uh, the basic objective of internet is to connect individual heterogeneous networks, both LAN and WAN distributed across the world using suitable hardware and software in such a way that it gives the user the illusion of a single network. So, the single virtual network is widely known as internet. So, which is essentially a network of networks. So, question arises what is the hardware and software that is needed. So, as we shall see here apart from these hosts which are essentially the computers you have we have got LAN and wide local area network and wide area network and you see there are other devices which is known as R essentially they are routers. So, you will require router that is the hardware that you require. So, this is the hardware that you require to link the various heterogeneous networks LAN and WAN. We shall discuss about the capability of router and how the routing is done. And also, we shall discuss about the software. The software that is being used in this context is known as TCPIP. So, transmission control protocol and internet pro pro protocol and that is actually the software and that acts as a glue or which binds the various local area network and wide area network together. So, we shall discuss about the uh, the the uh, the TCP IP in, in brief, briefly we shall discuss about it. Then whenever the data communication is done through internet, we have to discuss about 
a number of techniques such as segmentation and reassembly. A particular packet may not be sent through a particular network because of the restriction on the maximum size. So, it has to be segmented or divided. So, we have to discuss about the segmentation and how the reassembly is done before delivering it to the destination. And also we have to discuss about the encapsulation, how the frames can be encapsulated, encapsulated to send through internet. Then how the connection control is done, how order delivery is performed, how the addressing is done by using that internet address, IP address and various types of IP addresses that is being used, we shall discuss about that and how multiplexing is done through a single interface, we can have uh, access to multiple, uh, uh, multiple devices which is known as multiplexing and how these are all incorporated as part of TCP IP. We shall also discuss about the data compression that can be used for sending different types of signal through the mid transmission media for efficient communication and also we shall discuss about the data encryption techniques which is used for secrecy purpose or for the purpose of security and various types of transmission services has a priority grade of service and security. So, all these issues will be discussed in detail uh, particularly in the context of data communication through the internet. And by now you must have realized that the data communication is not a very simple technique. It will involve a number of very complex techniques and we have already mentioned about a number of techniques and obviously we shall see that it becomes a very complex thing. So, in such a case whenever uh, we have to deal with a very complex system, normally we use a layered approach. Layered approach is essentially a divide and conquer approach where a complex problem is divided into a number of simple problems and that each of these simple problems is solved independently and individually and uh, that is being precisely used in layered architecture. So, data communication for the purpose of data communication we have to use layered approach and in fact the next lecture that we shall give is the layered uh, on layered architecture where we shall see discuss about why layered approach is used and what is the what is layered approach and the basic principles of layered approach and how various layers for example, a system is divided into a number of layers and each of these layers is responsible for performing different functions and obviously questions will arise how these layers interact with each other. So, in that context we shall discuss about layers and interfaces and we shall see the various functionalities that is the uh, that is being provided which can be hardware, software or a combination of them which is known as entity and how various protocols, protocols are essentially agreed upon rules and conventions that is being used for communication and how these protocols are used in a layered architecture. And in the context of layered architecture, we have to discuss about services and service access points, the types of services, service primitives and particularly we shall discuss about the ISO's OSI reference model. International Standards Organization has proposed a open system interconnection reference model, which is essentially a framework of standard and that is being widely followed. So, in the next lecture we shall discuss about the ISO's OSI reference model and, and the, fun the functions of different layers will be considered uh, uh, layers used in OSI, OSI model will be discussed in detail. So, to summarize let us discuss about the give you some idea about the lecture sequence. First lecture that is being uh, that is that is being on now is essentially the introduction course outline that is this is the this lecture. Then we shall discuss about the layered architecture, third will be it will not be layered architecture, third will be essentially uh, data and signal. Then the fourth lecture will be on transmission, transmission impairments and channel capacity, then the fifth lecture will be on guided transmission media such as 
twisted pair, coaxial cable and optical fiber and the gui unguided media will be covered in 6 lecture and there we shall discuss about those radio, uh, then your uh, then the uh, then the very other techniques that I have mentioned, unguided media or wireless communication techniques we shall, dis we shall discuss in detail in the unguided media. Then transmission of digital signal will be covered in 7, seven and eight, seventh and 8 lectures that is essentially the encoding techniques that I mentioned those unipolar, polar and bipolar techniques that is being used for converting digital and analog data into digital signal. So, this, this will be covered in these two lectures, seventh and eighth lecture and ninth and tenth lecture will cover transmission of analog signal. That means, how the digital and analog data is converted not in digital form, but in analog form by using different analog uh, modulation techniques such as amplitude modulation, phase modulation and frequency modulation when it converts analog data to analog signal and also the ASK amplitude shifting, frequency shifting and phase shifting used for converting uh, digital data to analog signal. And we shall discuss various multiplexing techniques in lecture 11 where we shall discuss about the time division multiplexing, frequency division multiplexing and in the context of TDM as I mentioned we shall discuss about synchronous TDM and asynchronous TDM and in the context of FDM we shall also discuss about the wavelength division multiplexing. Then lecture 12 will cover the telephone system and DSL technology which are essentially the applications of multiplexing. Lecture 13 will cover cable modem and sonnet. Lecture 15 will cover interfacing to the media. Then lecture 15 will cover various error detection techniques and error correction techniques by using Hamming code. And flow control and error control techniques will be covered in lecture number 16 where we shall discuss about stop and wait, flow control, go back in ARQ techniques. So, various ARQ techniques and flow control techniques will be covered in lecture 16 and data link control particularly that HDLC will be covered in detail in lecture number 17. Then lecture number 18 will cover the switching techniques such as circuit switching and lecture number 19 will cover packet switching various characteristics and features of packet switching. Lecture number 20 will cover routing in packet switching networks. As I mentioned, we have to use routing technique whenever we send packets through packet switch switching networks. Then congestion that can happen in packet switching networks will be discussed in lecture number 21. And lecture number 22 will cover the uh, wide array network based on networks based on X.25 and frame relay. Lecture 23 will cover ATM the asynchronous transmission mode and in lecture 25, 24 to 25 we shall discuss about the medium access control techniques like such as con contention based, then uh, token uh, passing based, reservation based all these techniques will be covered in lecture number 25, 24 to 25 and then in the remaining lectures we shall discuss about cellular telephone network, satellite network various local area network including high speed local area network and wireless local area network and we shall discuss about the internet and internet networking techniques. We shall also discuss about the multimedia communication and where we shall we have to use the uh, compression and decompression techniques and we shall discuss about the security in communication where we shall discuss about encryption techniques and encryption and decryption, firewall and other techniques that are being used. So, this is in nutshell which will be covered in this lecture. So, with this we come to the end of today's lecture, the first lecture. Thank you.